you doing over here? Well, I just finished taping off this 2012 black Camaro because I think you're going to give me a hand. We're going to buff this out today. Yeah, you said a 2012? Yeah, brand new. 2,000 miles on this baby. What do you think? I think it looks horrific. It looks <laughs> terrible. Yeah, it does. Now, actually, grab this rule finder light over there. This is a brand new Camaro. And what we're going to do today is we're going to put this through a show car paint polishing process. And I have my good friend Todd Helm here, which is, who is the director of product development for Blackfire. But I like to call him my Blackfire guru. Absolutely. And we're actually going to use Blackfire products today, uh, namely uh, the compound and the polish, which are going to remove that <laughs> and restore a deep black shine to this car and kind of make it look like it should with only 2,000 miles on it. You yeah. Know? It's, uh, it's sad how messed up these cars get from the factory. Uh, they leave the factory gate, they get shipped down, and then they get scratched up at the dealership. Yep. So the, uh, after using the black fire polishes, which are going to make this thing look incredible, we'll go ahead and put the uh, combination wet ice over fire combination on it, which is going to seal in the shine and enhance the gloss. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a multiple step process, and that's going to start with, well, I've already wiped it down and taped it off, but normally you'd wash your car or wipe it to get it clean. So we've got to that part so far. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to inspect the finish. We're going to use a swirl finder light. We're going to use our sense of touch to see if it needs to be clayed. And then we're going to take the results from our inspection, and that's going to tell us what we need to do. And then after, if we need to compound it, we'll compound it, then we'll polish it, then we'll put the wax on it, and then we'll wrap things up. You ready to get started? Well, well, judging by the way the paint looks, I think we should get started right away. Okay, so let's get started. Man, I cannot believe the condition of this paint. This is worse than I looked in 2012. Well, you know, it's a brand new car. Shouldn't it look like it's brand new? Absolutely, Mike. Well, what do you see there then? There's a lot of deep scratches, swirl marks. Uh, I don't even know what those are called. <laughs> you know what's really handy is uh, that light he has there. That's called the Brinkman Swirl Finder light. Sometimes we call it the Cruel Master because it's very hard to please. But what's cool about it is a lot of times you might not have a sunny day that you could use the sun outside overhead to inspect your paint. So now you've got a handheld sun that you can use in your garage. You know what, before we can even worry about attacking these swirl marks, we've got to inspect the paint by touch and make sure that there's no bonded surface contaminants that are on the paint that are going right. to affect our polishing process. That's right. Now, when I feel this paint right now to my hand, it actually feels pretty smooth. But what do you got there, Todd? Well, slip your fingers into this, Mike. Okay. And now, lightly touch the paint. And what happens is, what do you feel? I feel like all these little bumps everywhere on the paint, like thousands of them. Absolutely. And what's going on is the plastic, the cellophane, as it stretches over your fingers, is going to increase your sensitivity, your touch, and you can actually feel all of that contamination. It feels terrible. Yeah, I could feel it with my bare hand, but I can with the plastic bag. No, absolutely. So what we're going to use, what do you have in your hand? This is some of the black fire detailing clay. And I've already kneaded this into what looks like a small patty or like a pancake. And that way, this is going to fit across my hand. And this is what we're going to use to remove these above surface bonded contaminants. And that could be things like overspray paint, tree sap mist, industrial fallout. Remember, we were talking about how this car might have sat on the dealership lot for who knows how long before Al bought it. And now, it's got all these contaminants off there, and we want to remove them before we start machine polishing because we don't want to loosen them and get them trapped between our foam pad and grind them into the paint. Absolutely. So even cars with 2,000 miles on them still need to be clayed. Brand new cars at yep. the lot still need to be clayed. What's really nice about the Blackfire Polyclay 2 bar is it's about as aggressive of a clay bar as you can get while still being safe for your paint. It's well, not going to scratch or damage it if you use it properly. Tell you what, won't you show us how to use this? Absolutely. What I've got here is the Blackfire Clay Lube, and this is actually a specially designed lubricant that's going to lay on the paint and allow the clay to glide over the top and remove all the contamination. What's really nice about this is it actually has a cleaner in it, so anytime you ever have clay kind of stick to the paint mm -hmm. and it leaves a smear, as you wipe away the lubricant, you're going to clean the surface as well. So it's dual action. Absolutely, dual Cleans action. Cleans and lubes. So you want to make sure you get a nice film of product down so the clay has something that it's laying on top of. Hold the clay as a patty, and using just a little bit of pressure, glide it back and forth. If you listen, you can actually hear that contamination. And to my touch, I can feel how rough the paint surface is. And as I work back and forth, I can actually feel it getting smoother. 
and that's the contamination coming off the paint. And that's probably a sign that you've got all the contaminants off that area, and now you can wipe the residue off. Absolutely. I don't know. Wow. In that little section on a car with 2,000 miles. That is incredible. So now what we want to do, if you yes. can hold this for me. You bet. Is we're going to wipe off the lubricant before we move to the next section. We're actually using a Supreme 530 microfiber towel. It's a very plush microfiber towel, so that ensures that it's going to remove all the liquid without streaking and scratching the paint. Okay. Now, Mike, if you hand that back to me. Put Just your hand in the bag and feel it now. Okay. Oh, that is smooth. That's as smooth as glass, and if I come up here, boom, I can feel all those contaminants again. So huge difference. And I can hear it. Yeah. Man, that's a huge difference. Well, that's something that anybody can do. It doesn't take any special technique to clean a car. Well, enough talking about it, Mike. Why don't you grab a bar and some lube and you can help me out? Okay, tell you what, I'll do that. Hey, Mike, looks like you're getting ready to do a test spot. That's right, Todd. I just put a piece of tape down here on the hood, and the reason for that is because I think what we're going to do right here is we're going to polish on this side, then we can compare the results on this side to the before side and tell if we're making any progress. Absolutely, and a test spot's nice because it allows you to figure out the process that you want to use or the process that's going to work before you do the entire car and realize that what you've done hasn't worked. Yeah, I've, I've met a lot of people that have went out and bought a compound or a polish, used it on their car, wiped it off and found out that actually they're working backwards, they're making the car look worse. So the whole purpose of a test spot is to dial in your process and prove that it works to one small area before you do the entire car. And if you can make one small area look good, that'll give you the confidence to tackle the rest of the car because you know it's gonna come out looking just like your test spot. Well, and that's important too because cars have widely different paint systems. Sure. Uh, a particular process might work on one car, but it won't work with the same results as a different car. So if you don't know exactly the results that you're trying to achieve, you could work backwards like you said. I've been detailing cars for probably longer than I want to remember, but anytime I'm working on a car that I've never personally worked on before, I do a test spot. Absolutely. And not only do different manufacturers use different paint systems, but this is a 2012 Camaro, and the paint system used on this could be different than a 2011. So even if I've buffed out a Camaro mm -hmm. from last year, the paints could change and it could be different. And when we talk about the paint, it's basically the hardness or the softness, or a better word is actually polishability. polishability. So what we want to do is we want to find out what it's going to take to remove these swirls and scratches and restore a show car finish. And even some cars of the same model year, same color can have different paint systems if the manufacturer has changed halfway through the year or had an update to the system. They can change systems paint on the fly. colors, yep. have different clear coats. And that's because technology is always changing. Absolutely, always, always okay. evolving. And speaking of technology, what we have here is the Blackfire Correction System. It's a two-step polishing system. It allows you to get professional results in the comfort of your own garage. It's excellent. There's a SRC. Uh, compound, which is designed to remove heavy defects, and then also the finishing polish, which is designed to restore maximum gloss. And it still has a little bit of cutting power, so if your paint is lightly swirled, you can sometimes get away with just using the finishing polish. Uh, what I would recommend, though, for anybody at home that's polishing for the first time, always start with the least aggressive method first. Yep. Start with the finishing polish and a fine pad. If that doesn't get you the results that you're after, then you're going to go to a more aggressive pad, a more aggressive polish. You can always get more aggressive, but the idea is to see if you can use the least aggressive part to get the results you're looking for, because by doing that, you'll leave the most amount of paint on the car. That's Absolutely. why. So what do you got there? We're going to try the compound first, though? Well, they, I mean, these are... Yeah, I would recommend starting at home with the finishing polish, yeah. but you and I both know that the condition of this paint... Yeah. I think we should uh, start off with the compound first, actually. I agree. Based on my years of experience, just looking at this, I can tell you a fine polish is not going to take those swirls out. At least it's not going to do it quickly. Might as well just jump to the big guns and get her going. Absolutely. And for the big guns, we have SRC compound from Blackfire. It's a consumer-friendly compound that's going to remove deeper imperfections while restoring gloss to the paint. It doesn't leave a lot of haze behind like the older compounds, and that's because it uses a really advanced diminishing abrasive technology. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't scour the paint like the old-fashioned compounds. It doesn't. If you want to hold that for me, I'll you get bet. the machine. And what's really nice about the Blackfire is you can actually use it with 
all style of machine. You can use it with a random orbital dual action polisher. You can use it with the Flex, which is a force rotation dual action polisher. And it's actually perfectly safe to use on a rotary polisher if the guy knows what he's doing. So it's very versatile. Absolutely. And, and what you're going to use here is called the Flex 3401. Correct. And if you grab that pad, you can kind of show everybody how this is forced rotation. So it's not free spinning like we're going to use with the Porter Cable in a second. It actually has a lot of power, yet it's very safe. It won't burn the paint and it won't put swirls in. Absolutely. And what's really nice is the pad that we're using is an orange foam pad from Lake Country. And it's called a constant pressure pad. It has a dual layer of instant rebound foam. This blue layer of foam allows you to actually tilt the machine mm -hmm. and the foam will absorb the off-axis movement, keeping the pad flat to the paint. It's excellent to use for beginners who, if you've ever seen a yes. new person polish, they can kind of get a little crazy with yep. the machine. So just, it helps keep the pad flat and that's the key thing. Absolutely. Okay, so I've shaken this up so it's ready to go. What are you going to do there first? Well, first I'm going to prime the face of the pad. This is a CCS pad. You can see the pockets designed to prevent the polish from absorbing into the pad. So it doesn't saturate the pad. CCS stands for collapsed cell structure and these little pockets here the foam is denser there so the liquids can go past it and that keeps it trapped between the pad and the paint and that's where you want the product. What I'm doing I'm just applying an ample amount of product. Once we're polishing we're actually not going to use uh, too much product maybe yeah. three drops. Yeah. But at the beginning, we want to make sure that the, the entire face of the pad is lubricated. Lubricated and also has abrasives already applied to the entire face. So when he turns that switch on, 100% of that face is already going to work for him, removing swirls and scratches. So it's priming the pad. Absolutely. We'll add a little bit more around the circumference. And I always call this my working product because it's actually the product I'm going to be working with. It's not a glamorous term, but it's a descriptive term that gets the point across. Well, Mike, you're very descriptive. I've written a few articles in my life. I've read a couple of those. <laughs> okay, now when you get ready to start buffing this, now we've already clayed this, so all the buff surface contaminants are out of the way. You're just going to stay on this one side, and then we can kind of compare when we're done what the results are. And what kind of speed are you going to start out with? This is variable speed, correct? Absolutely. Because the defects are so deep and our goal is to remove the paint defects, mm -hmm. we're going to use speed five or six. Okay. So a range. Um, a range between five and six, depending on the paint and what you're comfortable with. I'm going to use speed six and I'm actually going to add a little bit of what we call down pressure to the face of the pad. And that's going to help this machine remove all the swirl marks and damage. What's really nice with the dual action machine is it doesn't just spin. It oscillates while it spins. So you actually get a curly cue movement and that creates or prevents the heat from building up on the paint, reduces the risk of damaging it by burning it. And it also prevents you from putting in what we call holograms or rotary buffer swirls. Absolutely. So swirl free finish. When I start off on the test section, we always polish, we say like about a two foot by two foot size. If you need more corrective power, you shrink the area. If you're trying to remove less defects, you can enlarge it slightly. But I'm, the Flex 3401 has a variable speed trigger, so I'm going to lightly depress the trigger and spread the product out over the working section. And then bring your speed up? Absolutely. Okay. So now we have a nice film yep. of product over the surface. Make sure that it's not going to have any dry buffing. Now I'm going to increase the pressure and uh, push the trigger down all the way and use the full power of the Flex 3401 to remove some of these swirl marks. And uh, just for fun, before you started, you're gonna, you're gonna move the polisher in a back and forth crisscross pattern, right? Uh, what I call cross hatching. Cross yeah, hatching, absolutely. okay. Absolutely. Each pass, I'll go left to right or east to west, and then switch and go north to south. And then covering each pass by about 50%. Absolutely. Okay, let's see it.
You can see the polish is starting to break down. It's becoming a little more clear. So what I'll do, just to refine the paint a little more, is I'm gonna reduce my pressure on the trigger and slow the machine down, and reduce my pressure on the pad so that we're not cutting as much of the defect out. But we wanna make sure that we work the Blackfire SRC compound through what we call a polishing cycle. The abrasives are breaking down as we work, uh, we're working, which means the polish itself is actually becoming finer and finer, and it's leaving a better gloss behind. If we were to stop too soon, then you'd see swirl marks and scratches from the polish itself. Because the abrasives had not been completely broken down. So as you're working it, they're basically pulverizing or disintegrating. Or and dissolving. They, and they polish out their own scratches. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll make two more passes, one in each direction, with a little bit less speed and a little less pressure. see a lot of beginning uh, polishers, people that are new to polishing make, is they get on here and they hear the sound of the machine and the vibration and they start. They gotta, do the wild man technique. Absolutely. Yeah. You gotta keep it slow. You gotta allow the machine to work the polish against the paint. Exactly. You. you wanna give the oscillating action, the downward pressure, and then time, that means moving the polisher slowly to affect the paint or to abrade the paint. Now, one of the things I wanna share is whenever you're using a compound or a polish, you don't want to let this dry, so I've got a clean microfiber towel. I'm just going to come down here and gently wipe this off. Now I see you're wiping away in little circles. Is there a reason you're doing that versus scrubbing back and forth? Yeah, and the reason I want to do that is because, you know, the compound has got its own little grip to the paint, and what I want to do is I want to pull it off carefully without having to use too much pressure and possibly put a towel scratch back in. And so if I take small little swipes, I can overcome that grip strength with my towel versus if I try to take a huge swath off at one time. Usually what happens is I put the towel down, my hand goes this way and the towel stays there. So by taking little bites, anything is easy to wipe off. Kind of like Pac-Man taking little bites yeah, of the, the ghost. The, Remember that? That's the analogy I always used to see is the Pac-Man effect. So let's take a look at the paint. I can tell without any light how much darker this side looks already. Let's see. What do you think? Mark? I think this looks like it's ready to probably put wax on. All the scratches are gone. Uh, not quite yet. We could put wax on the paint right now, ship it out the door and call it done. But we're actually leaving a little something on the table. What's really nice about the SRC compound is you can see the quality of finish it leaves. But if you really want to go that extra mile, we I recommend do. finishing with the SRC finishing polish. It's an even finer grade of polish. And what it's going to do is polish the paint or jewel the paint like a mirror. Yep. It's going to look absolutely stunning. Well, it's going to maximize clarity because this car has a clear coat. So the whole goal of polishing out a car with a clear coat is to get the clear as clear as possible so your eyes can see the color underneath. And so the compound, you're right, it did an amazing job. It looks like a lot of polishes have already been used on here. And that's just the first step. The, the first next step, step is maximize that? gloss and clarity. And what the second step is the SRC finishing polish. This uses a similar abrasive technology to the compound compound, but it's a finer grade polish. It's designed for that last step, creating an ultimate gloss. What SRC stands for is scratch resistant clear, but this polish can be used on all types of paint finishes. Single stage, old lacquers, enamels, uh, metallics, even gel coat. Very user friendly. And what we're going to use to apply this is a different style of dual action machine. This is a random orbital polisher. If you call that for me, Mike. You bet. This is a random orbital. So it actually can oscillate and the spinning action is freewheeling. So if you press too hard or run against an edge, it's going to stall the pad and prevent it from spinning. Now I notice you got a mark there. The reason there's a mark is what causes that pad to spin is actually centrifugal force. So it, sometimes when it's running, it's really difficult to see if it's still spinning. You want to keep the pad spinning to make sure that the machine is exactly. polishing out swirl marks. Yep. Not that we have any swirl marks left, but we still want to break down the abrasives and maximize gloss. And, and that's because that's this type of tool. Why don't you hold that one up real quickly? Sure. Now this is direct drive, and in order to make that pad spin, you gotta grab that thing, and actually you can hear the gears turning. Or this one, see that just free spins. It gets its power from the speed. 
when you have it on the higher speed setting. And again, like Todd said, that black mark just makes it easy for your eyes to see that it's rotating because without it, it can be kind of hard to tell. And you want to maintain pad rotation under pressure if you're trying to remove out defects. Sure. So, Do you want to go ahead and use a black fire on this and see what we can do? Let me trade spaces with you. Absolutely. Mike. Okay, so, so this is a brand new clean dry pad. So I'm going to go ahead and do like Todd did. I'm going to go ahead and prime the pad. And I'm just going to take and put some of this product on here. Hold that. Absolutely. And then I'm actually blocking this with my hand back here so it doesn't spin. I'm going to take my finger and just spread this on here, kind of like you're putting uh, butter on toast or frosting on a cake, and just work this into the pad a little bit. And that's because this is a brand new dry pad, and that way, when I turn this on, 100% of this pad is going to go to work for me, polishing out this paint. If that's how you uh, spread butter on bread, I don't know if I'd want to eat at your house, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is variable speed, and the adjuster's back here starts at one and goes all the way to six, and usually for the machine polishing step, you want to be on a range from the five to six setting. Okay, I'm going to put the cord over shoulder just like you were doing, so I don't sit here and drag this up and down on the paint, and I'm going to do the same thing Todd did. I'm going to make a crisscross or cross hatch pattern, and I'm going to start out by spreading my product out over the entire surface that I want to work. That way I have a uniform layer of abrasives down, then I'll slow my arm speed down and start working that polish and maximize that glass. And what's, gloss. Well, what's really important to remember, same thing as before, is this uses a diminishing abrasive. So you're going to want to make sure you work the polish through its cycle. Yep. The abrasives in this right now are already ultra fine. Yes. But as you work them, they're going to become finer and finer, and that's why we're going to see a, a deep wet whiplash created shine. They're going to disintegrate, pulverize. Pulverize them. Here we go. Okay, so I've got a nice, thin, uniform layer of products down here. Sure. I'm going to bump my speed up. I'm going to put it there on about the five and the half. And I'm going to keep my hand right up here on the head of the unit and try to keep my pad flat. And I think you'll be able to see this pad rotating through that black mark there. And I'm going to make probably five to six section passes. Then we'll turn it off, wipe it off, and inspect the results. Sounds great. You know, you see the polish is starting to clear up as the abrasives are breaking down. This is important. Never lift this tool off the paint until that pad has stopped spinning or you'll throw splatter dots everywhere. You have to stop polishing, go wipe off the splatter dots. That kills a lot of time. I'm ready to wipe this off and yep. see what we're working with. Let's check it out. It looks like it wipes off really easy. Absolutely, it's designed for fast removal. Okay, so now what we want to see here is we want to see an absolutely flawless show car finish on one side and the swirls and the scratches on the other side, which represents how this side started out. We'll so see if uh, we've tamed the cruel master. Okay, and how you use this tool is you don't hold it down real close. You hold it about a foot and a half off the, the surface of the paint and then get it so the light is bouncing back at your eyes just like this. Then we'll draw it back and forth. Look at that. That looks incredible, Mike. Good work. Now, that's what a brand new black Camaro should look like, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And it's only going to get better when we apply the uh, Black Fire Wet Diamond All Finish Paint Protection Sealant and the Midnight Sun Ivory Carnuba Wax. That's right. Well, enough talking. You ready to get to work? Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's I do thought it. you were going to do all the work for me. <laughs> no. I'll just help.
Wow, check out these results, Todd. Mike, that looks great after the polishing. The paint is flawless, it's black, and it looks like a new car should. It does, and it's all clear and glossy and reflective. This thing's ready to wax. What do you got there for us? Well, instead of going right to a wax, we're actually gonna use Black Fire's Wet Ice Over Fire. It's a uh, combination system. It consists of the Wet Diamond All Finish Paint Protection, which is one of the most talked about and loved paint sealants that we offer. This stuff is amazing. And it uh, provides a real slick finish. It looks great on all colors. And it uses a very unique polymer system that kind of bends the light and gives the paint a really three-dimensional look. So we're gonna start with this, and we're gonna apply it by machine to make it easy. Yep. It wipes off super easy, and then we're gonna top that with the Black Fire Midnight Sun, which is an ivory-based carnauba wax with a little bit of the wet diamond polymers in it. It's gonna layer on top and give this paint a really, really deep glow. And that's what we want out of a finish like this. Absolutely. Now, how long does this have to dry? Well, what we recommend is applying a really thin coat and letting it haze for about five, 10, maybe 15 minutes if it's humid, and then wiping it off, and letting that cure for a couple hours and then applying the wax. Okay, let's do it. So now this is a uh, back to the DA polisher, right? Yeah, we're gonna use the random orbital, the port okay. cable, 7424. And I notice we've changed the pad here. Absolutely, we're going with a red CCS. It's an ultra wax, an ultra soft ultra wax pad. Very, very soft. Absolutely. And what we're gonna do is actually, when we were polishing earlier and creating this flawless finish, we were using speed six. Now we're gonna back it down between like speed three and four. Yeah. And the reason is, is because we only have to spread an even coat. We're not abrading the paint anymore. We're not trying to remove defects. We're just trying to seal in the shine. We've done the work step. We've removed all the defects. So like you said, we just want to spread our nice uniform coat. We could do this by hand, but this, this is another option to spread it out by machine. The machine lays down a nice thin uniform coat. Takes all the work out of it too. Absolutely. And what's great about this product, particularly when used with a red pad, is how little goes a long way. Hey, it saves us a little money. Absolutely. All we're going to need is three small drops. It's going to spread all over the pad. Okay. And then again, backing the speed down to three or four. Notice that he put his cord over the shoulder. Since we polished out the size of the fender, at this point, it's really careful that everything you do doesn't put a scratch or mar the paint because it's already flawless. And then one of the, the common mistakes that a lot of people make but it's easy to correct is you don't need to glob a lot of product on the paint. Remember the days, I'm sure you've done it yourself when you were younger, you glob a thick layer of, paint, uh, of wax or sealant on the paint because you think it's gonna make a thicker coat and last longer. Yep. And it, the opposite's true, you actually end up scrubbing harder to remove it, yeah. and you can remove some of the, the product as well. And the way I always explain that is, a lot of people think a thicker, more is better, thicker is better, but that's only true to my bank account and my gas tank, okay? When it comes to putting wax on a car, a thin coat is all you want, it's all you need. All right, so we got it on speed three. Speed three. I'm gonna go up to like, let's say three and a half, we'll split the difference. Okay. And then we're just gonna apply a nice, even coat across the paint. We still want the pad to spin a little bit, but it's not necessary when we're correcting paint. It's not vital. Mm. And what's nice about the wet diamond all finished paint protection is that you can apply it directly over the stripes. It's not going to stain or turn anything white. Then you only have to go over each section maybe once or twice just to make sure you have even coverage. Another thing is, is a lot of times when we take this off, you can see a faint little tape line there. And by running the polishing pad over the top of that tape line, it's going to remove that so it won't be there later on. Well, you're the polishing guru, so I'm going to go ahead and let you wax the, or seal the uh, Camaro. Okay, let's just see how hard this is. Okay, this is called the swipe test. What that is, is where you take your finger and make a brisk swipe or the area that has the sealant or the wax on it. In this case, it's a sealant. And where you swiped, if the paint is clear and glossy, that means the sealant is dried, it's ready to wipe off. Had it smeared, that would tell me I need to let some more time go by and let it fully dry. But this is obviously ready to wipe off. It looks good, Mike. I think we're ready to take off the wet diamond. Now to do this, you want to take your microfiber towel, fold it four ways, and again, this is the reason for this is it gives you plenty of cushion, spread out the pressure of your hand, just plop that down there. What I like to do is just come down and break open a little spot like that, and then from there, just kind of creep out. When I say creep out, I don't mean get weird on me. I mean just move out from the shiny spot and look how easy that sealant is to wipe off. Try that, Todd. 
One of the uh, the benefits of wet diamond too, Mike, is not only does it cure quickly and it's easy to wipe off, but it leaves the paint with an incredible slickness. It sure does. If I run the back of my hand over there, that is just as slick as can be. Looks good, feels good. Looks incredible. Okay, what's the next step? Well, that's what I was gonna say, we're not done yet. Yeah, it looks good to me, can't we Absolutely. just call it a day? No, we cannot. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm gonna keep you here a little longer, Mike. Okay. The last step in the process is gonna be to add the, the carnuba wax, which is Blackfire Midnight Sun Ivory Carnuba Paste. And it comes in a box container kit. And included is a microfiber applicator, as well as a placard. The towel. I'll take that. that towel. Wow, that is soft. Nice satin edging, too. And then in the blue silk container is the wax. Okay. And this is a pure ivory carnauba wax. That means the carnauba itself has been ultra refined. Carnauba wax by itself is normally yellow. Yes. This has actually been refined to be white. All the color's been removed. All the impurities have been taken Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And then it's actually combined with the Blackfire wet diamond polymers. So it's going to allow it to bond on top of the wet diamond sealant. And so you actually get a layering effect that's going to add an incredible amount of wetness, slickness to the paint, and increase the depth or depth of shine. Yep, give it a nice deep wet shine. Absolutely. Okay, and this is also sometimes called topping, right? Topping or layering, sure. Okay. Now, are there any special techniques that you use to hand apply a finishing wax like this? Well, the Blackfire Midnight Sun Ivory Carnauba Paste is designed to be wiped on and removed wet. You don't want to let it dry on the surface, so it's That's unique right. in that respect. Okay, so it's fairly fast then. Absolutely. Yep. No what drink. I personally like to do is use a foam applicator pad. And I like using a yellow one because I can see any dirt or dust that would, I would pick up on the paint while I'm applying it. And then put it into the wax, and I personally like to give it a small turn, just enough to load some product onto the pad. Doesn't take very much, does it? Not at all. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna block off a section, maybe three feet by three feet, or in this case a little smaller, and spread a nice thin coat over the surface. Now, when you're applying this type of product, you don't have to push hard, do you? Not at all. In fact, In fact the, you don't want to push hard. Yeah, you want to be very gentle because we've removed all the swirls and scratches, so now you want to come down and just basically just spread out a nice, thin, even layer of protection. And you can see that even that little amount that I loaded on yep. is still spreading with plenty. I can smell that, too. It smells good. It smells incredible. So we're just going to make sure we have even coverage over the entire hood and fender. And then like I had mentioned earlier, we do not want to let this dry on the surface. So you're immediately able to come back and wipe it off. Okay, let me try that. Wow. That wipes off nice and easy. Well, I think this looks pretty good and I think we're done. What do you think? Mike, I think this Camaro looks incredible. In fact, it looks like a 2012 Camaro should. That's right. My neck's actually starting to hurt a little bit. From the whiplash? From the whiplash. Hey, for more information, visit autogeek.net. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and this is my good friend, Todd Helm. Mike, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And since I did this part, I think you should finish the rest of the car. You know, I think that's fair. You've done enough for today. Okay, I'll take a chair and watch.
Hey, Mike, what you doing over here? Well, Todd, I just finished taping off this 19... <laughs> <laughs> ah, there you go, first one for the super real. 1989 Camaro. You know what you want me to say?